Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make puri which is a fried flatbread that you usually get at Hindu prayers. Now this can be eaten with almost anything. It can be eaten with any of the vegetarian dishes that we would make or it could be eaten with some of the sweets. So what I'm going to do is show you how to make the puri in this video and I'm going to show you how to make lapsi in my next video which is like a white pastry cream almost. It's very sweet. It's almost like a pudding and that's what's mostly eaten with puri. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that in my other video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the ingredients for this and then we're going to get cooking. Alright everyone, so making puri is actually quite simple. All it requires you to do is mix your dough and then go ahead and roll it out and fry them. So what I'm going to do for my dough is I have some flour in my bowl here, I have some sugar, I have some ghee to go ahead and mix in my dough and I also have some in my pot that's going to be used to fry my puri and I have some water to combine my dough. So the sugar really depends on how sweet you like your puri. I'm just doing it not to make them too sweet, I'm just putting enough in so you, you just get that sweet taste to it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add in my sugar into my flour and I'm going to give that a quick mix. And once you've gone ahead and added all of your sugar in, we're going to go ahead and add in our ghee. Now what this ghee is going to do to the dough, it's going to make it just a little softer and your puris will not come out hard. If you do not put the ghee, then the puris might come out a little dryish or tough when you're done frying them. So you just want to combine this with your hands. You want to get the ghee coated all over that flour. And when you're making puri, it's actually a good idea to make it a two-person job because when you're rolling it out and you're getting ready to fry, it does take a little bit of effort. You'd have to roll out all of your puri and then go ahead and fry because if it's a one, if you're doing it with one person, it might be a little hard to do that. So I've got my ghee and my sugar all combined into that flour. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start adding in my water a little bit at a time. Now this dough cannot be too soft and it cannot be too hard or else the texture will be off. So we just want it in the middle, almost like you're mixing roti dough. Now is the most important part for the puri. We're going to have to knead this dough until this dough turns nice and smooth. Now, the reason you have to do this is so this way you can build up the texture of that puri. If you don't do that step, then the puri can be very soft and that's not exactly what you want. You want it to be a little sturdy when it comes out of the oil. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start kneading this and you could either do this in the bowl or you could do it on your board. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start kneading it in my bowl and it's probably going to take about 5 to 10 minutes. So I'm going to keep kneading and then I'm going to come back and show you guys what it looks like. So I kneaded my puri dough for exactly 10 minutes and what you're going to notice after the 10 minutes is it actually becomes a little springy so when you push your finger and it'll come right out, it'll pop back out at you. And so what I did was I transferred it onto my board and I rolled it out into a log so we could go ahead and make our balls. So I just want to get them as even as possible so I'm going to go ahead and cut them. And remember it doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just trying to get them as even as possible. So this way when we go to roll them out, I have similar sized puris. I finished dividing up all of my dough and I ended up getting 24 pieces of puri here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start rolling them out and showing you guys how to do that. At this point you do not want to heat up your ghee yet because what you want to do is you want to roll all of these balls of dough out and then we can go ahead and start frying. Each puri takes less than 30 seconds to fry. So it really helps, especially if you're only one person in the kitchen, just to go ahead and roll them all out first and then we can fry them all one time. So I'm going to go ahead and roll them out. I'm going to put them on my other counter once they're rolled out, spread them out a bit and then I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to fry. So I'm going to start showing you guys how to roll out these puris. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get one ball of dough here and spread it out just a little bit and then we're going to go ahead and dip it in our dry flour. Now what you want to do is you want to just start rolling away and this is exactly like if you were rolling roti. You just want to make sure you put enough dry flour on the board so this doesn't stick. And while you're rolling these puris do not be skimpy on the flour. I say this because when we fry puri we usually fry them in pairs being that they're so thin they're going to cook very quickly. So we usually fry them in pairs just to get the process done a little faster. So when we fry them in pairs what we do is we will roll one out and then we'll go ahead and roll another one out and put them just lie them right on top of each other so this way when they're ready to fry you pick them both up and drop them into the oil 
So I'm saying that you need to use a lot of dry flour because if you don't, when you lie them on top of each other, they're going to start to stick. I'm going to show you guys again how to roll another one out. So I went ahead and I dipped the ball of dough in some dry flour, spread it out a bit, and then you want to just roll it until it's nice and round. And this right here is a great two-person job because since it's a lot of little balls of dough that need to be rolled out, it'd be great if you had two person, two people rolling them out and it would go a lot faster. So I went ahead and I rolled out all of my puris and I went ahead and I left them in a single layer on the counter actually because I did not want them to stick. Being that I'm alone in the kitchen today and I don't really have any help, I don't want to put them on top of each other because the longer they sit, that's when they start to stick. So I just kept them in a single layer. I will still fry them in pairs. So I just wanted to show you guys how I laid them out and we're gonna start frying now. Before I start to fry my puri, I just wanna show you guys a little setup I have here. In my heavy bottom pot, I have my ghee that's heating up on a medium heat. You do not want this too hot or else the puris are gonna cook way too fast. I also have a plate here where I'm gonna transfer the puri into when I'm done draining it. And this is like the little drainage system that I have here. I have a plate and I went ahead and I put a bowl on top. So once I take the puri out of the hot ghee, I'm gonna put it on top here, and all of the excess ghee is gonna go to the bottom of the bowl, and it's just gonna stay on that plate. So once I'm done with that step, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it onto this, and this is where I'm gonna store them. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna get one of my sets, so I have two here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in the ghee. You're gonna let it bubble up for a few seconds. And then once you see it starts to bubble, you're going to quickly flip it over. And this does take practice. If, if while you're flipping it they tear, it's fine. And the spoons, the two spoons in your hand might feel a bit awkward. But you just got to try it out for yourself and see how it works for you. So once you see that they fry for about 10 seconds on each side, you're going to go ahead and drain it off on one spoon. Then we're going to go ahead and lie it down on this tissue that we have on the bowl. Now, of course, all of that ghee that was on it, it's gonna go ahead and sink to the bottom of the plate, and it's gonna get absorbed into that tissue. I have another set that I'm just gonna quickly show you guys. You just wanna get it in the hot ghee. And when it starts to sizzle, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it. Then you want to get it out as fast as possible. And if your ghee is as hot as mine, it's going to cook much faster than it would if you had it a little bit lower. So I'm actually going to lower my heat because I don't want them to burn. The last thing you want is for these to get any brown color on them. They're not supposed to be brown. So I'm going to lie it on that tissue and they're just going to go ahead and let the ghee sink down. And you can go ahead and dab it while it's on that tissue. How delicious all of these puris look. They're so soft and pliable and ready to be served with any vegetarian dish of your choice. And remember, I will be posting my Lupsi video very soon for you guys to go ahead and try out with this. This could also be eaten with gurma or that sweet mango curry. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. And please feel free to comment down below and let me know what you guys would like me to make next. Thanks for watching, everyone.